From Nashville, Tennessee, it's the annual 2021 NACPRO Awards. The National Association of County Parks and Recreation Officials recognized 43 individuals, organizations, programs, and projects this year. The awards program is the perfect platform to identify excellence while also fulfilling NACPRO's mission to advance the practice of parks and recreation. And here's this year's Awards Committee Chair. Hello, I'm Monique Horton Odom, Director of Metro Parks in Nashville and Davidson County, Tennessee. I'm also the 2020-2021 Chair of the Awards Committee for NACPRO. I'm excited to present the 2021 NACPRO Award winners for Outstanding People, Places, Projects, and Programs from county and regional park agencies across the United States. Most of the entries for the 2021 list were nominated at the height of COVID-19. I see this as an affirmation that our Parks and Recreation departments demonstrated remarkable resilience during a time when our services were needed most. The pandemic also brought forward crucial aspects of our work, work that facilitates a strong connection to nature and to people. This year's presentation, as in 2020, is virtual. This year, we also decided to expand the number of recipients from 30 to 43. As a result, our presentation will be a bit longer, but hopefully just as enjoyable. Thank you. Thanks, Director Odom. Now let's get started. Our first category is conservation. There are three recipients in this category. Our first award goes to the Lake County Forest Preserve District in Illinois for the Climate Resilient Restoration at Grant Woods Forest Preserve. The district has experienced increased flooding, late summer drought, and intense winter storms. In 2020, the district updated its strategic plan to address the consequences of climate change. This demonstration project is designed to ensure the resiliency of the preserves through objectives like removing water from the field to recreate the wetlands that existed before the land was farmed. The district is sharing its experiences and seed sourcing techniques with other land managers, commercial seed producers, and volunteers. Our second award in this category goes to the Herman and Dorothy Schuster Nature Preserve from the Environmental Management Group with Broward County Parks and Recreation in Florida. Before its dedication as the Herman and Dorothy Schuster Nature Preserve, the site was nicknamed The Forest. It was an apt description for the lush landscape, almost 20 acres of basin swamp with bald cypress, red maple, and pond apple, as well as areas of willow and a disturbed mesic flatwood. Broward County Parks and Recreation began creating a master plan in 2006, but it took 13 years to develop the park. Improvements include on-street parking, 2,000 feet of nature trails, interpretive signage, picnic tables, and bicycle racks. To minimize the environmental impact, all work had to be done by hand with small equipment. Broward County's purchase of the land from the Schusters ensured that as a nature park, its character as the forest would be restored and preserved. Our final award in this category goes to the Saginaw County Parks and Recreation Commission in Michigan for the Saginaw River Headwaters Recreation Area. This project is helping to restore a critical river corridor while providing a quality of life enhancement for the underserved population in the city of Saginaw. The project site is a long abandoned brownfield spanning 334 acres. This initiative created partnerships with the state of Michigan, the Nature Conservancy, and Saginaw County to develop an urban nature area for hiking, fishing, and wildlife observation. The park site is part of the Saginaw Bay watershed designated a U.S. important bird area. In addition to its global significance for migratory waterfowl, the watershed boasts a great diversity of other wildlife, and it's also a world-class walleye fishery. 
Our next category is historical or cultural facility. Our first award in this category goes to the Fairfax County Park Authority in Virginia for the Colvin Run Mill Miller's House exhibit. This exhibit at Colvin Run Mill in Virginia broadens the historical narrative of merchant families who lived there during two distinct periods, the 1810s and the 1890s. In the exposition titled Miller's House, visitors learn about mill history, families that likely occupied the house, and how those families fit into the community. The furniture includes original items, as well as masterfully crafted period reproductions. The guests are invited to move through the house at their own pace without a guide. Visitors experience the rooms as if they were guests in the homes. They can sit, peruse books, touch items, and play a game. Two projectors convey historical information on a loop that lets visitors linger with the past. At evening events, candles illuminate the rooms and interpreters greet the visitors. Our second winner in this category is Goochland County Parks and Recreation in Virginia for the Goochland History Center and Courthouse Green. The Goochland County Courthouse is considered one of the best preserved Jeffersonian courthouses in America. The Courthouse Green and the History Center provide programming and recreational opportunities, accessibility, and visibility to Goochland's rich cultural legacy. The Green serves as a self-directed recreational experience while the History Center partners with the Parks Department on tourism and programming efforts. The interior of the center includes historical exhibits and multi-use programming space. The Courthouse Green and History Center is fully ADA compliant and includes historical overviews, interpretive signage, and a living history museum found in the Old Stone Jail. In the area of marketing, we have three winners. The first is Metro Parks in Five Rivers, Ohio, for the Nature is Open campaign. During the pandemic, Five Rivers Metro Parks introduced Nature is Open, a campaign promoting safety, health, and independent use activities in its parks. The campaign utilized a multifaceted approach to connect people to nature amid a pandemic by offering tools for guidance and support. The Metro Parks Trails Challenge introduced in May 2020 was a fun way to encourage people to explore the region's land and water trails in a safe manner at their own time and pace. In addition, the free Metro Parks mobile app was launched in the summer of 2020. The app allows users to navigate the trails, explore points of interest and amenities, and discover custom outings, such as the Trails Challenge. Both the Trails Challenge and the mobile app were a success. Oakland County Parks and Recreation in Michigan is our second winner in the category of marketing for the Oakland County Parks and Recreation 2020 Millage. For the first time in its history, the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Commission sought voter approval to increase its millage rate. To gather public support, the staff created a layered approach to millage awareness that was aimed toward three primary target audiences, active users, passive park lovers, and registered Oakland County voters. Because of the stay-at-home orders, the crux of the millage awareness effort was digital. But other methods included signs at park entrances, restroom posters, kiosk signs, and a mailer delivered to 484,000 registered voter households. Thanks to these efforts, Oakland County voters supported the proposal with over 76 percent approval. And our final winner in this category is Forest Preserve District of Will County, Illinois, for The Buzz. Amid the pandemic, the Forest Preserve District set out to create the unique offering of a nature show to be broadcast to their 300,000-plus followers on social media. The Buzz launched in June 2020 and airs on the district's Facebook and YouTube pages every last Wednesday of the month. The show's goal is to educate and connect viewers to the natural and cultural aspects of their local area. The program covers a wide variety of entertaining topics and explores places that the general public rarely sees. The next category is Operational Facility. 
Our first winner in this category is Metro Parks in Toledo, Ohio for the Canelay Treehouse Village. Treehouses capture the imagination, turning adults into kids and kids into outdoor adventurers. So it came as no surprise when Metro Parks Toledo's latest project won the locals over. They hired the star of a popular reality show, Pete Nelson, to design a village made up of five unique tree houses and three tent platforms. The village has a large common tree house accessible by ramps that can accommodate up to 49 people. Four tree houses are available for overnight reservations. Three platforms can be reserved for camping in the trees, in tents, or in hammocks. The park's construction crew crafted the structures from Nelson's designs, but it took a village to build a village. The Metro Parks Toledo Foundation surpassed its fundraising goal, raising more than $1.6 million from 750 individual and corporate donors. Today, the tree houses are sold out through 2021. Our next winner is the Centennial Park Recreation Center and Aquatic Facility operated by Charlotte County Government in Florida. Located in Centennial Park, the Recreation Center opened in 2019. The adjacent aquatic facility opened a year later. The Recreation Center includes a large lobby with a control desk, gymnasium, two multi-purpose rooms, fitness center, staff office space, and a break room. In addition, the facility has a community garden, playground, and multi-open areas slated for future amenities. The aquatic complex includes a 50 by 25 meter pool with one and three meter diving boards, ample deck space, locker rooms, and staff offices. Patrons are already embracing the facilities, and Centennial Park will be a focal point within the community as it grows. We have two winners in our next category, which is for Outstanding Contributor. The first award goes to Harry Glasgow with the Fairfax County Park Foundation. Even in his retirement, Harry Glasgow remains a passionate supporter of the Fairfax County Park Authority and the Park Foundation. He has contributed not only money, but significant time and effort to his belief that we must protect nature. Since joining the Foundation's board, Mr. Glasgow has donated more than $14,000 in cash and volunteered time equal to almost $33,000 in in-kind contributions. An active member of the Friends of Huntley Meadows Park, Harry has inspired goodwill among park visitors as the leader of weekly birdwatching groups. He's also a certified master naturalist and master gardener with a demonstrated ability to connect people with the natural world. Thousands have benefited from his stewardship and cultivated appreciation of their local parks and natural resources. The second winner in this category is Johnson County Park and Recreation District in Kansas, for the Russell and Helen Means Observation Tower. Russell and Helen Means were a passionate couple who dreamt of preserving their beloved rural property as a scenic beauty after they were gone. To this end, the Means donated 355 acres of their land to the Johnson County Park and Recreation District. To honor the Means, the district opened Kill Creek, a 900-acre regional park in 2001. With additional donations from the estate, the Russell and Helen Means Observation Tower was designed, built, and opened to the public in October 2020. The 50-foot tower features a fully accessible elevator and stairs for those willing to do the climb. There are stunning views of the park and western Johnson County from the top of the tower. The structure fits into the natural landscape of this nature-based park, preserved for future generations because of generous contributions of the means. Outstanding public official is our next category, and we have three award recipients. Our first award goes to Kathleen O'Connor with the Westchester County Department of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation in New York. Commissioner O'Connor has been with the department for over 35 years, and she's the department's first female leader. Commissioner O'Connor worked relentlessly with local and state officials during the pandemic 
to transform the Westchester County Center and Glen Island into a field hospital and a drive through testing site. She also initiated the construction of Ribbons of Remembrance, a memorial dedicated to the victims of COVID-19. As the summer approached, the commissioner managed the successful reopening of golf courses, pools, beaches, camps, drive-in movies, and of course, Bicycle Sundays. Commissioner O'Connor's dedication helped make the pandemic less painful for those people visiting the Westchester County Park System. Steve Klika with the Johnson County Park and Recreation District in Kansas is our second winner to receive the NACPRO Outstanding Public Official designation. He was first appointed as the Johnson County Board of Commissioners ex officio member in 2014, tirelessly advocating for parks and recreation and continuing his role on the board ever since. Among Steve's accomplishments is the successful campaign for additional funding for parks and recreation. His tenacity resulted in an unprecedented 0.75 mil levy increase. This additional funding has allowed the Parks District to develop over 3,500 acres of new parks and trails. Steve was also instrumental in the district's involvement in the new Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center. The facility opened in 2017 and became the cultural hub for the new culture division. William Bowie with the Fairfax County Park Authority in Virginia is our final winner in this category. With two gold medal awards, acquisition of over 10,000 acres of parkland and open space, the passage of four park bonds worth nearly half a billion dollars in capital funding, adoption of the authority's first five-year strategic plan, and most recently embracing the One Fairfax Initiative, which envisions an equitable and accessible park system for all, William Bowie is the epitome of an outstanding public official. His legacy and accomplishments during his tenure as chairman of the Park Authority Board is impressive. Never cowed by adversity, this Chicago native has guided staff and the Park Board through park closures, record crowds looking to recreate safely on trails and in open spaces, and of course, the emergence of virtual programming. The first African-American to lead Fairfax County Park Authority, Bill Bowie is a well-deserving recipient of the Outstanding Public Official Award. Our next category is Outstanding Support Organization, and the award goes to Friends of Frying Pan Farm Park with the Fairfax County Park Authority in Virginia. Collaboration is key between Fairfax County Park Authority and the Friends Group which support it. In 2020, the Friends of Frying Pan Farm Park lost their cash cow fundraisers due to the pandemic, but they created a novel NAS Cow experience to more than make up for the loss. NAS Cow is a chance to sponsor the park's cows in a race. The animals were trained to follow a bucket with sweetened feed, and the spectator-free race commenced. A social media post following the event allowed fans to watch the winner cross the finish line. Nas Cow raised nearly enough to pay for the farm animals' needs for the entire year while raising awareness of the park. During 2020, the group also replaced almost a half mile of fencing, built a cattle shade structure, and improved parking lots innovative, out-of-the-box, and effective. Outstanding Volunteer is our next category, and the award goes to Joyce and George Proper, nominated by Lake County Forest Preserves in Illinois. Joyce Proper grew up exploring the grounds of the future Grant Woods Forest Preserve, and for the last 27 years, she and her husband, George, have been dedicated volunteers at the 1,200-acre property. They run restoration workdays at Grant, leading other volunteers in the management of invasive species, collecting and sowing native seeds, and planting native flowers and trees. 
Joyce inspires everyone with her historical knowledge of Grant and her passion for plants. George supports her leadership with his chainsaw skills and herbicides. In the last 15 years, Joyce and George have donated over 10,000 hours of volunteer work. Our next category is Planning Initiatives. Our first award goes to Three Rivers Park District in Minnesota for the 2040 System Plan. Three Rivers Park District's 2040 System Plan was developed through extensive public outreach. The plan introduces the idea that every person can connect with nature every day. There are three objectives to this vision. You belong here, parks matter, and lead by example. The models detailed in the plan may serve as a point of reference for other park agencies. For example, the visitor experience model is a framework for understanding visitors' needs. The plan calls for a renewed focus on introductory offerings to ensure that we make nature available and accessible to everybody, conveniently and comfortably. Another element of the plan is the recreation opportunity spectrum. It's a park classification tool to ensure that diversity of experiences is present throughout the park system. Initially developed by the U.S. Forest Service, Three Rivers' adaptation of the Recreation Opportunity Spectrum marks one of the first applications of the model in urban areas. The next award in this category goes to Ozaukee County Planning and Parks Department in Wisconsin for the Ecological Prioritization GIS Tool. Climate change, land use, and invasive species threaten Ozaukee County's natural resources and contribute to the loss of ecological lands and farmlands. To confront the challenge, the Ozaukee County Planning and Parks Department developed a GIS tool that formalized the process of comparing and prioritizing individual parcels for preservation and restoration. The tool also improves decision-making for maximum ecological benefit. The GIS tool has played a critical role in securing $1,260,000 in federal, state, and private funding since 2016. It's been instrumental in supporting the implementation of many projects, including the completion of the Uleo Creek Habitat Restoration Project, the acquisition of multiple parcels prone to flooding on the Milwaukee River, now River Oaks County Park, and holistic restoration of a 56-acre aquatic preserve known as Little Menominee River Fish and Wildlife Area. The tool outputs are shared with project partners, local officials, and the public to inform and direct future land and water preservation and restoration efforts. The next awardee in this group goes to the San Diego County Department of Parks and Recreation in California for the Parks and Recreation Capital Investment Model. This department developed a tool for prioritizing proposed capital projects. The model is structured to organize and score data against benchmarks. The tool analyzes how well projects meet the department and county goals, as well as national standards. It also helps the department identify gaps in the availability of services and provides information for effective public policy making. The model also supports good stewardship of public funds and helps to address community needs and service deficiencies. Our next category is professional. The Professional Fellow Award goes to Holly Browder with the Parks and Recreation Department in Columbus, Georgia. Holly Browder began her career in 1999 as a part-time administrative assistant. Working her way up, she rose to the position of director of the department in 2016. Since becoming director, Holly has helped garner over $1,250,000 in funding. The resources were used to replace playgrounds in disadvantaged neighborhoods all across the city. Holly also oversaw the renovation of the Tillis Recreation Center and other projects funded by outside donations. In addition, she is serving on the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association Executive Board, where she is the incoming state president for 2022. NACPRO Executive Board President-elect Holly Browder 
has also served on the NRPA CAPRA Commission since 2018. Highly respected amongst her peers, Holly Browder is known for her diligence, drive, and focus on results. We have two recipients in the Lifetime Professional category. The first is Kirk Kincannon with the Park Authority in Fairfax County, Virginia. Fairfax County Park Authority Executive Director Kirk Kincannon retired in February honored with a virtual retirement gathering that drew over 200 people, including members of Congress, county and park officials, and employees who worked with him. It was a moving tribute to a park professional who dedicated 31 years of his life to making recreation a joyful activity for countless park visitors. His vision of accessible parks, open space, recreation, and fitness as a link to increased health, diverse experiences, and world-class facilities has been fulfilled. His accomplishments helped propel the department into the ranks of national leaders. Director King Cannon helped the Park Board make wise policy decisions, including adopting and implementing the One Fairfax policy, which mandates a look at all issues through the equity lens. He left the agency in good standing, ready to address the need for greater accessibility, aging infrastructure, and more diverse staff. The second in this category is Laura Weatherall with the Recreation and Parks Department in Howard, Maryland. Laura devoted her career to the Howard County Recreation and Parks Department. Sadly, we lost her to COVID-19 in February of 2021. Laura helped shape the department's therapeutic recreation program and was a passionate advocate for individuals with disabilities. In 1998, Laura was named the department's Bureau Chief of Recreation. During her 34-year tenure, Laura held several managerial positions and demonstrated the value of hard work and perseverance. She was the Howard County Employee of the Year in 1998, received NRPA's Member of the Year Award multiple times, and was named a HOPE Award Honoree for Excellence in the Field. In 2016, she was honored with the election into the American Academy for Park and Recreation Administration as a fellow. In addition to her many professional accomplishments, Laura was a loving wife, mother, and friend. She will be missed. Our next category is Removing Barriers Initiatives. Our first winner is the Adaptive Recreation Summer Camp with the Parks Department in Loudoun County, Virginia. As the COVID pandemic ravaged across the country, Loudoun County Parks in Virginia came up with a plan to engage the children with disabilities. This category of youth has been affected particularly hard by the pandemic. At the same time, these children rely on consistency and routine. The disruption of routine leads to anxiety, anger, and other negative feelings. These children also struggled with social isolation. COVID-19 made it difficult to operate an adaptive recreation summer camp, but the department's recreation and community services team made it happen. Board games were built with plexiglass to separate players. Each camper was provided their own supplies. While adhering to mitigation strategies and state requirements, staff broke the barriers that existed for campers with disabilities. Children experienced a recreation-based summer experience in which they could benefit from play and social interaction safely. Our next winner is the Extraordinary News Show, nominated by the Parks and Recreation Department in Columbus, Georgia. At the onset of COVID, the staff at the Columbus Parks and Recreation Department realized that it wouldn't be possible to keep the Therapeutic Recreation Center open. They quickly decided to utilize the Zoom platform, and by the second week, most of their participants were logging into classes, which included auto mechanics, easy sign language, French and Spanish, life skills, and a variety of others. For Black History Month, participants learned about black inventors, gave presentations, chose African names, and wore African necklaces and crowns that they had made. 
The highlight of their weekly activities is the Extraordinary News Show, where each person investigates and reports on a chosen news topic. No wonder they say it's never too late to rediscover yourself. Our final winner in the Removing Barriers initiative is Wildlife Connections Ambassadors with the Forest Preserves of Cook County, Misericordia, and Clearbrook, Illinois. Wildlife Connections Ambassadors is a work experience program that creates opportunities for adults with developmental disabilities to deliver nature programming to school groups and visitors. Employment and volunteer opportunities are essential for all people, but they're crucial for persons with disabilities as they provide positive mental stimulation, growth opportunities, dignity of labor, demonstration of competence, and extension of personal community. The program commenced in February 2019 at River Trail Nature Center in Northbrook. Ambassadors were coached on how to engage with visitors using mammal, bird, and reptile artifacts. The public response to the program has been very positive, and it was decided to expand it to the other five nature centers. Wildlife Connections Ambassadors is an excellent example of an innovative program contributing to a kinder and more inclusive world. Our next category is social justice. Our first award goes to the Parks and Recreation Department in Palm Beach County, Florida for breaking down social justice barriers through parks in the Glades region. Lake Okeechobee is cradled around what is known as the Glades region, an agricultural area with low-paying jobs. Recognizing the lake's beauty and recreational opportunities, Palm Beach County Parks and Recreation developed eight parks in the area, averaging 6.2 acres of parkland per 1,000 residents, which is higher than the national average. The development of these parks has been received positively by residents, many of whom are unemployed and living near the poverty level. Suitable housing, health care, infrastructure, education, and social services are issues in the area, primarily for people of color. With the generous sponsorship of local donors, the Parks Department developed a football field, a space for community meetings, and health and recreational programming. The Parks Department sees its role in breaking down social justice barriers by providing more opportunities for disadvantaged people to engage with nature. The next awardee is the First Responders and Multicultural Community Cup from the Chesterfield County Parks and Recreation Department, Virginia. The First Responders and Multicultural Community Cup was a regional partnership between Chesterfield and Henry Coe Counties, the City of Richmond, and Virginia State Police. The event brought the communities together for a day of soccer, community building, family activities, and opportunities to interact with each other. Ten soccer teams with 140 players from public safety agencies across multicultural communities, including Asian, African American, and Latino, participated in the tournament. The first event was held in September 2019, with plans to host it annually. One of the gathering's objectives was to inform the multicultural community about the roles of public safety officials in relaxed, informal settings. In addition, the first responders learned the cultural norms of the groups and gained a greater understanding of their concerns and needs. The Community Cup demonstrated that people from the region with different backgrounds and cultures can live, work, and play together, respecting and appreciating their uniqueness. And our final winner in this group is the Ready Committee from Forest Preserves of Cook County, Illinois. The Forest Preserves of Cook County protects nearly 70,000 acres of public land. However, there are considerable inequities in the region concerning access to nature, clean air and water, and outdoor recreation opportunities. In 2018, the department created the Racial Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, also known as READY, to address the issue. The objective was to analyze the internal challenges for the agency to be able to implement solutions based on racial equity. 
Ready works to educate employees on how to practice racial equity in the workplace while restructuring internal processes to reflect the department's values of equity and inclusion. Ready is currently focusing its efforts on human resources and hiring, community engagement, professional development, and volunteers. Our next category is Trails and Corridors. The first winner in the Class 1 category is Blue Ridge Tunnel Trail in Nelson County, Virginia. The Blue Ridge Tunnel Project is an excellent example of adding historical perspective to natural phenomena to ignite public interest. The tunnel was constructed in the mid-19th century beneath the Rockfish Gap in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Central Virginia. The tunnel is 4,273 feet long and lies 700 feet below the surface at its deepest point. It was initially designed to move goods and people back and forth from the coastal plain to Piedmont, Shenandoah Valley, and beyond. An unsuccessful venture in the 1950s rendered the tunnel unusable. That is, until Nelson County envisioned the passage as a significant recreational and historical amenity an economic initiative that will further strengthen the area's thriving recreation and tourism industry. The four and a half mile round trip trail has proven to be very popular since opening in November 2020. Nelson County is currently expanding parking on the east side of the tunnel to accommodate the increasing number of visitors during the spring and summer months. The second winner in this class is the Trail Wayfinding System by the Parks Department in Ingham County, Michigan. Finding your way through the trails of Ingham County Parks was confusing and complicated until 2017. If visitors had found themselves in distress or had to call 911, the emergency services sometimes could not pinpoint the exact location. That's why the department developed a trails wayfinding system for hundreds of miles of trails. The family of signs, which includes informational, directional, and warnings, were designed to be cost-effective and adaptable while maintaining a unique visual identity. The overall system has been well-received by the public providing trail users with tools to solve navigation issues, enhance safety and security, and promote a sense of place. Visitors have also expressed appreciation for the ease of use and the options to plan trips and accurately calculate the mileage. We have two winners in the Trails and Corridors Class 2. The first is Gwinnett Trails Master Plan by the Parks and Recreation Department in Gwinnett, Georgia. In 2016, the Board of Commissioners of Gwinnett Parks and Recreation identified the need for a high-quality trail system that would offer an alternative mode of transportation and an inclusive place to exercise and socialize with family, friends, and neighbors. Two years later, the Board adopted the Gwinnett Trails Master Plan, which details trail priorities and provides guidance on trail networks, typologies, and branding. Last year, construction began on the Harris Greenway Trail, which includes a 2.2-mile paved multi-use trail with a 760-foot boardwalk and links Harbins Park with Tribble Mill Park. The trail was named after the local visionary and conservationist Lloyd Harris, who laid the groundwork for the county's park and recreation system. The master plan envisions nearly tripling trail mileage to more than 310 miles in the coming decades, building a comprehensive trail system that connects facilities and amenities across the county. The second winner in this category is Metro Parks in Cleveland, Ohio, for Reconnecting Cleveland, Transportation, Investment Generating, Economic Recovery Project, or TIGER. In 2016, Metro Parks won almost $8 million in grant funds in the highly competitive Tiger Grant Program. The money has been allocated for reconnecting Cleveland Pathways to Opportunity and has been used to construct five trail projects totaling over four miles, including a new bridge. The projects fill critical gaps in the active transportation network in Cleveland and help serve as linear parks. 
This innovative bundling of projects also leveraged another $8.4 million in funding from various sources. The Tiger Project addresses neighborhoods in Cleveland that had been subject to decades of disinvestment. Residents were physically cut off from employment centers and other amenities, which resulted in economic, social, and racial segregation. The Tiger Project will help stabilize local neighborhoods, provide low-cost transportation options, generate economic reinvestment, and provide city residents with access to jobs, transit, and two central green spaces. We have several winners in the Park and Recreation Program Class 1. Our first awardee is for activity bags from Henderson County Parks and Recreation, North Carolina. As COVID-19 hit in the spring of 2020, the staff of Henderson County Parks and Recreation thought of novel ways to reach their constituents. They decided to create a newsletter to be distributed with a brief description and online custom-made word search, joke book, and crossword puzzle. These items would be made with varying themes all related to parks and recreation. For younger patrons, they decided to fill bags with supplies for crafts and activities. A short video accompanied each project. The videos proved to be creative, funny, and entertaining. Once the newsletter goes out, registration starts, people sign up, and then pick up their bags. 95 videos were produced during the pandemic, and judging by the community's response, this novel way of reaching out has been a resounding success for the local Parks and Recreation Department. Our next awardee in this category is Metro Parks Toledo, Ohio for the program Snow Place Like Metro Parks. Because of the pandemic, the opening of the brand new Glass City Metro Parks in Toledo went without much fanfare. So local volunteers cut 150 three-foot tall snowmen from plywood and invited the public to decorate them. The snowmen were transformed into binocular wearing birders, figures swinging on playgrounds, attentive rangers, gnarly mountain bikers, and more. Participants excitedly shared progress photos on social media. When complete, the snowmen were returned to the park and the crews quickly lined the main park road with them. For weeks, the snowmen remained standing as a free, self-guided form of entertainment and as a safe way to introduce the community to a new park. Our next recipient is the Parks and Recreation Department in Chesterfield County, Virginia, for the Witching Hour at Henricus Historical Park. The idea for the Witching Hour originated with an interpreter at Henricus Historical Park, an open-air living history museum. The site recreates 17th century life in the second permanent English settlement in North America. And let it be known, life was rough back then. The event's focus was to explore the history of witchcraft through demonstrations and discussions on witch trials, witch hunters, familiars, and cunning folk. Visitors enjoyed a video that detailed why women were explicitly targeted as witches, a gallery show with original artworks for sale, and there was even a special program for children that included a story, craft, and trick-or-treating. A parade around the historic site also allowed the children to show off their costumes. This optional, socially distanced program sold out quickly. Even though it was not your typical trick-or-treating event, the Witching Hour showcased the creativity of the Henricus Park staff and provided a model for others to think outside the box. Our next award recipient is Stark Parks in Ohio for the Wildlife Window Visits. As the pandemic ravaged the country, Stark Parks thought of ways to engage senior citizens in retirement homes and care facilities. And what better way to do this than to provide a closer interaction between people and nature? The department's Wildlife Conservation Center houses wild animals that can't be released because of injuries or other conditions. In May 2020, these wildlife ambassadors began wildlife window visits to local senior care facilities. With residents inside the building, park staff could safely navigate the outside, moving room to room, 
and providing an up-close view of owls, hawks, and kestrels through the windows. As of March 2021, Stark Parks has reached over 3,000 senior residents in 19 locations throughout the county. With these visits, seniors have remained connected to their local parks and were given a joyful form of interaction during the isolated and lonely times of the pandemic. Another winner in this category is Three Rivers Park District and Hennepin County, Minnesota for the Save the Summer Initiative. Save the summer, get kids outdoors. That was the motto when Hennepin County reached out to Three Rivers Park District with a proposal to get kids outdoors in the summer. Three Rivers contacted the most diverse and economically challenged cities within their jurisdiction and then developed and administered a grant program to engage the children at the local level. The program included Teach Me to Fish programs where kids were given fishing gear to keep, Bikes for Kids, which provided 400 youth with refurbished bikes, helmets, and safety training. Drive-in programs, concerts, and movies. Storybook Trail and other family-oriented activities. Over 50,000 families were served by the Save the Summer initiative, with a total expense of $728,000 funded by Hennepin County's portion of CARES Act funding. The Department of Parks and Recreation in San Diego County is our next winner for the Virtual Recreation Center. In the wake of COVID-19, the Parks Department shifted most of its programming from live to online. Nearly one year old, the Department's Virtual Recreation Center has connected thousands of people to do-it-yourself recreational activities. Inside the center, there are opportunities for people of all ages, interests, and abilities embodying the department's commitment to accessibility and inclusivity. Among the offerings, people can find Facebook Live tours and how-to videos, ranger-led Zoom chats on topics like bugs and invasive species, coloring kits for kids to address pandemic-related concerns, and a reimagined summer movies in the park. Costs for the program are minimal, but the impact is significant. Our next category is Park and Recreational Facility Class 1. Our first recipient is the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Department in Loudoun County, Virginia for Gwen Thompson Briar Patch Park. Gwen Thompson Briar Patch Park is a five-acre neighborhood park in Sterling, Virginia. The park's playgrounds are among the most popular in the county. An extensive redevelopment plan kicked off in 2020 to improve and modernize the existing facilities. The former playground and swing set areas were leveled, and the wood chip flooring was replaced with poured rubber to allow better drainage and lower maintenance costs. The outdoor fitness court project is a source of pride for Loudoun County Parks, Recreation, and Community Services. It's designed to engage the entire body and is divided into seven areas that can accommodate patrons of all ages and abilities. The community has expressed excitement and appreciation for the enhancements and upgrades. Our second recipient in this category is Metro Parks in Toledo, Ohio for the Manhattan Marsh Preserve. With the opening of the preserve in 2020, Metro Parks achieved their goal of placing a park within five miles of every Lucas County resident. The 70-acre park includes a loop around the marsh, multiple boardwalks and overlooks, a basketball court, a 20-vehicle parking lot, and a restroom facility. Manhattan Marsh is an important stop for migratory birds. The new park also benefits local children, many of whom have never benefited from exposure to nature. The project is a culmination of decades of community input, grassroots activity, and organizational partnerships nurtured in the mutual desire to improve the quality of life for the residents and the neighborhood surrounding the marsh. Our next awardee in this category is Regional Park District in East Bay, California for three line shore projects in Bay Point, Albany, and Oakland. 
The East Bay Regional Park District in San Francisco Bay Area completed three projects in 2020 to provide public access, mitigate sea level rise, and restore wildlife habitat. The project sites are located in the cities of Bay Point, Albany, and Oakland. The Bay Point Regional Shoreline Restoration Project includes enhanced amenities such as ADA restrooms, drinking water, and shade structures. The Albany Beach Project closed the last critical gap in the San Francisco Bay Trail between Emeryville and Richmond, adding new amenities and habitat improvements on the beach area and dunes. The Judge John Sutter Regional Shoreline Project is the culmination of over 50 years of diverse community engagement and regional collaboration among nine agencies. This 22-plus acre park is located along the eastern span of San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge and provides majestic views of the city by the bay. Park and Recreation Facility Class 2 is our next category. And the award goes to the Los Angeles, California County Department of Parks and Recreation for the Roosevelt Park Stormwater Project. The Franklin Roosevelt Park Regional Stormwater Capture Project integrates both below ground and above ground features. The below ground segment includes two infiltration galleries and three infiltration wells on an adjacent street. The above-ground green infrastructure features a construction of pervious walkways and vegetation using drought-tolerant plants and native trees. The project diverts, captures, and infiltrates stormwater from a 203-acre tributary area into the central groundwater basin. The project enhances the community's green space by incorporating an education garden with drought-tolerant and native vegetation that can adapt to climate change. Bilingual English-Spanish signage across the site provides easy access for the ethnically diverse local population. The project also incorporates recreational features such as a new skate ramp, exercise stations, a picnic area, playgrounds, and a redesigned artificial turf soccer field with lighting. Most of the work was completed by the summer of 2020. And with that last award, that wraps up the 2021 NACPRO Awards. We'd like to congratulate each of this year's winners once again and thank them for their continued dedication, despite the pandemic, to promoting such high standards for parks and recreation departments across the country. Thank you so much for joining us, and we can't wait to see what's in store for the upcoming year.